Hi friend, welcome to Lemon Yellow Art Studio. My name is Tia and I'll be your art teacher today. So let's get started. So here's a bit of a closer look at our project. Before we get started, I am gonna go over our supplies. So here they all are. The first thing you'll need is a watercolor palette. I love this Yarka watercolor palette. We'll mostly use the blue. Then you'll need a angle brush, mostly a big brush. Then a pair of scissors, a glue stick. I like the purple glue. You'll need two paint pens, a dark blue and a white. Then a little sponge. I like these with a the little stick attached to them. Makes it easy. You'll need some fish stencils. I have these linked below. You can print them and cut them out. Then you'll want to get some water lily pads. I'll show you how to make these. Two yellow pom-poms for the center of our flowers. You'll need two pieces of felt, a white one and a light pink. This one's a little bit short, but you want it to be about an inch and a half wide, and they're probably 12 inches long. I also created a line just like this all across, and this will be a little bit of a help when we're cutting. You'll need green painter's tape, some salt. This is just pink Himalayan salt, but any salt will work. You'll need a jug of water. And this is optional, but a hot glue gun really helps in this project. Otherwise, you can just use um, a regular liquid glue like the one I have here. It takes a little longer to dry, but that's okay. Then you'll need some watercolor paper. I like this brand. It's awesome. A 9x12 sheet is good. You will also need some acrylic paint. So you'll need a black, a white, a red, and a yellow. And these will be for our koi fish when we go to paint them. All right, so I'm going to show you how we create our water lily pads. And you may already have these in your art kit, and then that, if that's the case, you can skip ahead. So what you'll need to do is just tape up a regular sheet of copy paper, and then I'm mixing about one part glue and two parts water together in this little dish. I'm gonna use my big paintbrush just to kind of mix it all in, and this will be kind of our glue mixture that will keep some tissue paper on our page. So I'm going to start by applying some glue water first on my page, and then I'm gonna use my tissue paper and just stick it on there and kind of paint right over top of it to kind of make, sure, make it nice and flat. So this is just regular tissue paper, the stuff that you use to wrap gifts in. I just bought mine at the dollar store and I wanted to use a variety of different colors. So I like the green, but then the blue and the yellow also kind of add a bit more depth and fun to the, the pad. So I'm just gonna keep gluing until I've covered my entire page. This is gonna give you a lot of lily pads. So if you're more than one person making this project, this is plenty for both of you. You can kind of both do one. And then make sure you rinse your brush really well. And then this is going to take a while to dry. So once it's dry, then you can go ahead and take off all the tape like I am here. Now you can go ahead and just cut out circles with um, a scissor, or I'm going to show you how I use a stamp or like a big circle cutter stamp thing. <laughs> there we go. That, that thing. It's about three inches wide and it makes really nice round circles so this is really handy if um, you don't want to be cutting out circles so I'm just going to kind of move my page across and create some circles and there we have it there's our lily pads now I used every bit of my paper I even created some half circles because those are really nice for gluing to the edge of the paper so it's almost like the lily pad disappears um, beyond the paper and then I'm going to cut some triangles out of my circle so that they actually form a lily pad just like that so you can make these as wide as you want um, I kind of like just like a piece of pie almost just take out a, a nice slice <laughs> And you can just do this with all of your circles. You're probably going to need about 
three big circles and then maybe one or two half circles for your paper. Now that one isn't really that great, so I don't think I'm gonna use it, but these are perfect for what I need. And then even in my half circle, I'm gonna cut a little piece out for that lily pad. So we're just gonna set those aside for right now and we're gonna get started on our water. So this is with our watercolor paper, all nice and taped up. You can just tape yours right to the table, even though I have mine on this board, that's totally fine. So what I'm doing is I'm just covering my whole page with water. This is going to create a nice base for when we go in with our blue paint, it'll kind of flow really nicely. So I'm just kind of mixing in water into that blue paint in my watercolor pan, creating a bit of a pool of blue. And then I'm just painting the blue everywhere on the page. There's really no right way to do this, just as long as you're getting lots of blue all over. I don't really want to see a ton of white paper showing through. Make sure you get blue all over the place. And you can kind of see it likes to kind of bleed and spread out. So just kind of let it do that too. That's what makes it look really cool. And then when you're done, rinse your brush and we're going to take some salt. So you're going to take a pinch of salt and just sprinkle it right over top of your paper. And you'll notice how it makes these cool little bubble effects. And that's what we want. Very cool. So this has to dry now and it'll probably take about 15 minutes. So while we wait for it to dry, we're gonna cut out our flowers. So grab your two strips of felt, and then just like I'm showing you here, you're gonna follow that line and you're gonna create little, little cuts just like that. You don't wanna go past the line. And you wanna do that on both of your felt pieces. Sometimes, at least my pink felt that I bought is a bit thicker, so sometimes you have to kind of do little cuts and use the bottom of your scissor and just do little, little cut until you get to that pink line. This takes a little while, so just be patient with yourself. And then to create the flower, we're just going to fold our felt in half like so. And you want the two pieces that fit together, you want that to face you. And then we're gonna roll it up nice and tight and kind of follow that edge. You don't wanna roll it really wonky. You kind of just wanna go slowly and kind of roll it so it's all in one nice line. So now you can take your liquid glue and create a little bit of liquid glue right there and kind of hold it right like that. Now this needs to take a while to dry. Oh, look how pretty that is, hey? So in order to keep it uh, shape so it can dry is I just used a piece of uh, like a hair band and I, or you can use an elastic band or whatever and just kind of tied it around and this is gonna take a little while to dry. So you may have to wait like 20, 20-ish 20 minutes Otherwise, I'll show you how you can use the hot glue to speed up the process. So I'm just gonna roll this one up again, and then I'm gonna grab my hot glue this time and create a little dot. This is where you may wanna have um, a family member maybe help you to, so you don't hurt yourself. And I'm just gonna hold that for a couple seconds, and then it dries pretty quickly. That's kind of the nice thing about the hot glue. But again, it's optional, you don't have to use it just takes a little longer if um, you use the school glue. So now I'm going to kind of spread these apart and we want to get right in the middle. I'm going to give a little blob of glue there and we're going to put our center for the flower, our little yellow pom-pom. Boop! Right in there. Nice. It's okay if you see the white glue. It'll dry clear. And then I'm going to use, you can also use the hot glue for this part too just speeds things up, which is kind of nice. And there we go. Look how pretty these water lilies are. Okay, so my watercolor paper is all nice and dry. Now I need to rub off the rest of the salt. So sometimes that's a bit hard just with your hands. So you can use a bit of like a scraper tool to do that. And then we're gonna lay out our fishies, our fish stencils. So this is kind of how I want mine to be, but you can arrange them however you want. Then I have a piece of um, paper 
and you can use parchment paper or palette paper and I'm just squeezing out my colors my yellow red black and white and these are our colors for the fish and then I'm gonna grab my little sponge now I'm gonna start with the white so we're gonna dab a bit of white onto our sponge and then you want to hold your stencil with one hand and kind of dab the paint with the other one so I'm going to start with my two fins on the side right by the tip of the fishy and then I'm going to do the little fins the back fins the tail I guess <laughs> and I, you can kind of see I'm holding it nice and steady and then I'm going to go in with my yellow dabbing off the excess and then I want to make a bit of an orange, so I added a tiny bit of red to it. And I'm just kind of mixing that together together with my sponge. And then dabbing off the excess, and then I'm going to fill in the rest of the body just with that orange, just like so. I'm not going to go too far into the fins because I want those to stay white. But that looks really pretty, a very pretty orange. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of red because I want to add some red detail in there. You can see I just added a tiny bit to my sponge. And then the last thing is some black. So I just want to have some like black detail in a few spots. You won't, don't want to add too much of this because I still want to see the orange and the red happening. So just a few little dots. Awesome. I love that. So now I'm going to set my sponge down and then grab the edge of my stencil and lift it up. Voila. Wow. Look at that pretty fish. So now we're going to do the same thing with the other one and you can do the same colors if you want, or you can switch it up. And if you want to add a different color, you totally can. Maybe this one is just going to be red or just going to be black it's totally up to you koi fish are kind of a bunch of different colors right but I wanted to kind of keep these similar because in my world they're sisters so they're kind of they kind of look the same maybe this one is a little bit more pink than the other one and that's okay Yeah, and I just wanted to brighten up those side fins and the tail a bit, so I'm just going in with a bit more white over top. Very nice. Okay, and then just adding a bit of black. Awesome, that's perfect. So I'm going to lift up my stencil now, and it should have a very pretty fish. Yay! Oh, so nice amazing who knew you could do that right yay <laughs> so now we're ready to glue our lily pads so I'm just laying them out how I want them on my paper and this may take a little while <laughs> but you just decide wherever you want to put them you don't really want to cover your fishies up just yet so I would put them kind of just like how, how I did here kind of in the corner and see how those side pieces fit nicely right at the, along the edge of the tape. That's what we want. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, now I'm ready to start to glue. So this purple glue, even though it's purple, it will dry white or clear so you won't see it. So I'm just going to glue my lily pads on there. So you want to make sure you're not gluing on the green tape, right? So I made sure not just to put the right the edge of that one lily pad along the edge of the green tape there and I'm just again holding my palm over top of those so they dry nice and flat then we're going to grab our Posca pens our paint pens or you can use just a regular blue marker too that works if you don't have those but I like the paint pens a lot so we're going to use these to create some waves. So I'm going to start with my blue one and I'm just going to create some little lines kind of following the shape of our fishies. So it looks like there's ripples in the water. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, not quite waves, more ripples. And I'm very light. I'm making some small marks, some big marks. 
there's really no right or wrong way to do this. You can just kind of very gently create some marks. You'll notice I'm holding my Posca pen kind of at the end, so it's easier to create some more fluid motions. And then I'm outlining a little bit in my lily pads because I want there to be a bit of like a shadow underneath them. So I'm just outlining maybe about half of them, not the full lily pad. And then I also want to create a shadow underneath my fish. So I'm just going to create an outline on one side of my fish. So it looks like there's a drop shadow happening. So a drop shadow is a shadow that's right below an object or a thing. So just like that. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other fishy, but just on the other side instead. There we are. And then I'm going to create a few little dots. So these are kind of like, it could be bubbles. And then I'm going to switch to my white paint marker and I'm going to also create some dots and bubbles and things all over my, my paper. And I'm going to follow some of those blue lines as well, kind of go over or beside them a bit. It's okay if they overlap, it doesn't need to be perfect at all. And then I'm going to draw some bigger, oh yeah, I'm going to draw some fins. So there's actually a fin right on top of our fishy. So I'm just going to draw that. And then if you want to make some of those tail fins or the side fins a bit brighter, you can kind of go back in with your paint marker. And then I'm drawing little, two little whiskers on either side of my fish because koi fish have these little like mustaches. So I wanted to make sure to put those on. And then I'm drawing some bigger circles for some bubbles and kind of filling them in a bit. All in kind of random spots. There's no really perfect spot to put them, just wherever you want. And then again, some more little, little bubbles in places. Perfect. Now we're ready to add our water lily. So you can decide where you want to put yours. And you can, again, you can use your liquid school glue, just create a nice big blob on that lily pad and then press down on that water lily and kind of hold it for a couple seconds. This will take a while to dry. So once you're done kind of putting them on there, you want to set them somewhere where they can dry properly. It'll probably take about 30 minutes or so. Or if you want to be really fast, you can use a hot glue gun and put a bit of hot glue on one lily pad and then stick that second water lily on there. Yay, so now we're ready to take the tape off. Once everything is nice and dry, this is my favorite part because look at those beautiful white clean border lines. Oh, it just looks so finished. Well, that's all. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had as much fun as I did. I'd love to see your project. So please send me a photo, comment below or send me an email. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next project. Mm -hmm.